Beloved, the choir we want to thank God for the message just passed to us now. The message is let us thank God. As you are standing right now, I want you and I to thank God. Say, Oh God, I thank you for the grace to be alive in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you for the grace to be alive in the name of Jesus. I thank you, oh God, for the grace to be alive in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. When I listen to that song by the choir, they say, Thank God for your joys and for your sorrows. Can you do that? Say, Oh God, my Father, I thank you for the joys and the sorrows of my life. In the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, I thank you for the joys and the sorrows in life in the name of Jesus. I thank you all over everything. I thank you God for the joys, for the sorrows in my life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Beloved, can you just imagine a situation where you do not have any risk? You are living a life no enemy, nothing. You probably may not have got to where you are now. I want to thank God for your enemies. Say thank you, O oh God, for the enemies that you are helping me to overcome in life. In that name of Jesus, thank you, O oh God, for the enemies that you are helping me to overcome in life. Some of us have our husband, our wife around us now. And you do not know their words. Let God remove them. And you know that you have missed the Lord. We need to thank God for our families. Say thank you, O oh God. For the family that you are blessing me with. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, O oh God, for the family that you are blessing me with. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, we just worship you. We thank you because you are our God. We thank you because we are not serving man. We thank you because it is Jesus that saved us. Today, O Lord, we worship you. Be magnified over our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and have a seat. Beloved, God just spoke to me during the week and said a message that you preach during the lockdown. Repeat that message before the whole church. That is what is leading to the message of this morning. When I preach the message during the lockdown, was only one single message. But this same message God says I should preach it today and preach it again next week. So we are not going to open this message today, beloved. I want you to open your Bible with me to Isaiah chapter 16. 
Isaiah chapter 16. I'm going to read verse 15. But I will concentrate on the latter part of that verse 15. Isaiah chapter 16. Verse 15 says, We are, we are last that are the forsaken and dated. So that no man went to thee. I will make thee an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I will make thee an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I'm speaking of what I call making generational impacts. Making impacts that will go beyond your own generation. Making generational impacts. When this church began over 12 years ago, we did something that was special. We started to pray. One of the prayers that we prayed was, Oh God, this church that you are asking us to start, give us a covenant that will back us up. Give us a covenant that will back us up. Without your covenant, we cannot move forward. Beloved, one of the covenants that the God gave us is the passage I've just read to you now. Isaiah chapter 16, verse 15b. God said, I will make thee an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. For God to make one excellent is something great. For God to not say that your excellency will be eternal is dumbfounding. I want you and I to answer those questions personally. 
so that your children will not suffer them. Can you imagine the situation? A father was a slave. He lived all his life like a slave. By the time he died, children too become slaves. That father chose a useless life. Hear me today. When you are born, you make property in your family. Can you decide that your own children will not live in poverty? Now, if you can sincerely answer them, 
they will help you to make good generational impacts. There is a university in America. It's one of their best. They call this university Stanford University. This university was started, I mean, established by a husband and wife. The husband name is Mr. Leland Stanford. The wife, Mrs. J. Stanford. They had a son. The only son of their lives. And they call this son, named him after the father. The last Stanford Junior. The boy grew. Five years. 10 years, 15 years, but in the year 1884, their only child at the age of 16 had to die for it. That time, the type of thing they are doing with the coronavirus now, that was killing people, that was how bad. The drug we use of Taiwan today was not available. So at the age of 16, they lost their only child to typhoid fever. They look at themselves. They are about 50. So they cannot have a child again. Although we know that God can do it. This couple look at itself. Say, since we have lost our child, what can we do so that our generation will know that we are alive? I learned that they went to Harvard, Harvard University. They studied Harvard University. They asked the chancellor of Harvard what can we do for impact and depression? I don't know what that one told them. They just went back to their place and they put down some money. They said, this money, this money, we will use it to honor our dead son. Let us establish a university and name this university after, after our dead son. I've not told wife. Said, if you can set up a university that will bless many generations, then all the children that will come to that university, they will become our children. That university is now over 1,000 years old. You cannot imagine the number of children that couple will now have. What that couple did is called generational impact. If some of us have been in the position of that couple, I know that we have caused God and said, God, our only son is gone. Yeah, we have one more child. The blood, they decided to impact their generation. What does it mean to make generational impact? What does it mean to make generational impact. What does it mean to make generational impact? Number one, to make generational impact means to do great deeds, D-E-E-D, 
ETS. And get works. That will be your blessings to many generations. Do so to great that will be your blessings to many generations. Number two, to make generational impact means to set up good examples that people after you will follow. To set up good examples that people after you will follow. There are families in the Lord where it is not thinkable that a man will meet his wife. Because many years ago, their great great father has said, No, no man can beat a wife. Somebody in that nation has set up a good example. But there are families too, the Lord. Beating of the wife is normal. Their father beat the wife. The father too beat the wife.
strange path of life that you and I must think about. Here is fact number one. If all you want in life is to be born, go to school, get married, have children, eat, sleep, and die. If that's all you are living for, your destiny is twisted. I will repeat. If all you want in life is to be born, go to school, get married, have children, eat every day, sleep every day, and one day you die. You have wasted your destiny. Fact number two that I want you to think about. I'm not supposed to think about this number two. If you live a life that fails to put an end to some evil family habits. If you live a life that first will put an end to some evil family pattern, evil family habits, beloved, your life can be said to have no meaning. The way you are living your life now, evil things that you met. You just wasted the life. Fact number three that I have to consider. Number three. If you are repeating the mistakes of your father and the mistakes of your mother now, you are wasting your divine opportunities. The mistake that your father committed, you know it. The mistake that your father committed, you know them. You are just repeating the same mistake. You are wasting your divine opportunities. First of all, that I have to think about. The way you are living now is not making your children to enjoy some special blessings. Something is wrong with your life. You are born again, you know Christ now. But your life is causing your own children problems. Please, go and, go and take it again. Facts number five. First, number five. If your own children have no good things to come from your life, your children, if you call them now, what good things can your children come from your life? If your children say nothing, means you are invaded in life. So be not think deeply this morning. If you call your own child now, say so what good thing can you learn for your father or your mother? Something will be wrong if they cannot point them out. Number 16 that I want to share with you, be not. You may say that, no, oh, I cannot say it, but please let me put it better to you. Eat the life of your own children. 
will not be better than your own life. You are failed. Can you hear that? If the life of your own children will not be better than you, you have failed to make the generational impact. Something must be wrong. The way you have been training your children, they are not going to be better than you. Something is wrong somewhere. You are a father. You are a mother. You don't want your children to be better than you. You are filled in life. Beloved, this is part one of this message. But please, if you look at the pattern in the Bible, there are some examples that all of us need to think about. Examples of people who made generational impact. Number one was Abraham. He lived a life of obedience to God. And God decided that because of Abraham, children and children of Abraham will be blessed. That was generational impact. You Lord, because of Abraham, God decided to bless his son, Jacob. Generational impact. And because of Jacob, is it Jacob now? Yes, yeah, because of Jacob, God, Isaac first. Isaac first. And because of Isaac, God decided to bless Jacob too. Can we be so close to God? Can we walk personally with God in such a way that because of us, our children will be blessed? That is what God wants to do. I know many of us know, do I call him Mr. David? David. He was the son of Jesse. Jesse, before David emerged, we knew little about the family of Jesse. But just because of David, generations, many generations are still remembering the city of David. Acts 13, verse 26. That's it. Acts 13, verse 36. David served his generation by the will of God. Are you serving your own generation now by the will of God? You may think I'm not talking about men. Esther made generational impact. A woman. He took, she took an action that God, because of her, saved a generation. Apostle Paul took the Lord. At the beginning, he was not a Christian. But when he became a Christian, he did more than the bishops. The Lord, your own life too can be better. The life of your children should be better than your life. God wants you and I to make generational impact with our life. We love this life we are living in. A day is coming when you will give accounts. On that day, the church that you belong to does not matter. Because they will not ask you this your church. The pastor that you, that pastor your church will not matter. A day is coming when God 
God will say, the time I gave you, what have you done with it? The talent I entrusted upon your life. How many people have you used it to bless? Beloved, the life that God has given us. What impact are we using for? By the grace of God, next Sunday, I'll be sharing with us keys that can help us to make generations impact. And we will we'll sing this simple chorus. Jesus, 